According to the calculations of the main directorate of intelligence of the Ministry of Defense, in general, more than 18,000 Russian servicemen voluntarily left the service in the combat units of the district. The lion's share of them, about 12,000 fugitives, belong to the 8th Combined Arms Army of the Armed Forces of the Russian Federation, which the enemy constantly engages in hostilities in the east of Ukraine. Approximately 10,000 of them were drafted by Moscow through mobilization. The remaining 2,000 are contract workers. It should be noted that ex soldiers deserting the Russian army are prosecuted in Russia and face obstacles in receiving asylum in the West. Since the full scale invasion, there has been a surge in asylum claims from Russian citizens, though few have been successful in gaining protection. Policymakers are split on whether to view Russians in exile as potential assets or security risks. However, in practice, deserters find it challenging to obtain asylum. Most hold passports that restrict travel to just a few former Soviet states, according to lawyers, activists, and the deserters themselves. At present, soldiers are required to have their internal Russian passports and military identification papers with them at all times, and commanders have no right to confiscate them. But in practice, officers can confiscate servicemen's documents when they go on leave or are hospitalized. But the problem is that most servicemen do not have international passports, different from the internal passports used inside Russia. In last June, President Vladimir Putin signed amendments that require men to surrender these passports within five days of receiving a draft summons. Russia and Poland trade threats of wider war that could turn nuclear. Poland must maintain close ties with the US and the Franco-German-Polish Weimar Triangle must be urgently revived, Foreign Minister Radoslav Sikorski told Parliament, noting that NATO as a defensive mechanism would withstand a Russian attack on its members and result in defeat. Sikorski gave his annual foreign policy speech focusing on the challenges resulting from NATO from the Russian threat, the need for Poland to keep close to the US and the urgency to revive the Weimar Triangle. It is not us, the West, that should fear a confrontation with Vladimir Putin, he said, adding that he did not intend to threaten Russia as NATO is a defense alliance, but to show that an attack on any NATO member would result with Russia's defeat. In the face of new challenges, Europe must improve the quality of its defence cooperation, including through the European Sky Shield initiative and by exploring other possibilities related to the EU's common security and defence policy, Sikorsky said. Besides, Poland has warned Russia that a conflict with NATO would lead to its inevitable defeat as Moscow threatens to expand its war beyond the borders of Ukraine. Russia and Poland have been trading barbs after Poland's president, Andrzej Duda, said his country would be ready to host nuclear weapons of a NATO member, and Russia moved missiles to neighboring Belarus. Duda's remarks sparked a flurry of angry responses from Russian officials who have warned Poland that it would be considered a legitimate target in the event of a direct confrontation with NATO. Russian Foreign Ministry spokeswoman Maria Zakharova described the Polish leader's comments as provocative. As you understand, if the American weapons are deployed on the territory of Poland, the Russian list of legitimate targets to defeat in a situation of direct military confrontation with NATO will be immediately updated, she warned. Russian Deputy Foreign Minister Sergei Ryabkov said any NATO weapons sent to Poland will become a priority target for the Kremlin. According to iNews media outlet, Poland has hit back, suggesting Russia would falter if it tried to wage war with the military alliance whose presence covers a huge swathe of its borders in Europe.